some reason, the author of the Shakespearean plays has gone out of their way to make use of um, women playwrights. Nobody's ever had any reason to, to explain why Mr. Shakespeare should have started writing Italian marriage comedies in 1590, 1592, but it's a perfect match for Amelia's biography because she was um, at court uh, from up to 1592 when she was w living with Lord Hunston and the people she was writing about, the, the, the Tudors, um, were, you know, her fam essentially the family she was was living in. She was living at court. She was living with you know Henry VIII's son. Uh, uh, I mean, this was this was not remote stuff. This was like the family that she knew about. And what's more, the Willoughby family was the cadet branch of, of the Tudors. So both through her adopted Willoughby connections and also through living with Hunsdon for, for for another ten years. This is like getting on for twenty years of living right in the middle of Tudor history. So writing about Henry the Sixth um, was not like oh, let's write a, write a play about sort of ancient, ancient, ancient English history. It was writing about something that was very immediate and people were very aware of, of their, their, their ancestors and, and the formation of, 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 of the Tudor line and all that stuff. That was everyday life for her. And then, of course, it all changed because she was thrown out of court um, it, when she got pregnant at the end of 1592. And that's when she made um, a marriage to her, her, her cousin, um, Alfonso Lania, who was himself a French-Italian ancestry. And that is the point when she started writing about um, Italian marriage comedies. That's the point when she started writing the true play and, 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 and Romeo and Juliet and, and, and Gentleman Verona and all these seven I Italianish comedies. Um, they were relating very clearly to, to her own life and sh the shrew play relates very very clearly to her own life because you if you look at the the two different versions of the shrew play there's the um, the taming of a shrew 1594 and the taming of the shrew 15, 15, 15, 15, 16, 23 folio um, they they one is a rewriting of the other and it, it, across them you have an Amelia and you have a Baptista and you have an Alfonso and an Amelia is her name and Alfonso is her husband's name, Baptista is her father's name um, and you know and the taming of this this woman Kate who is who is like a kite um, which is a sort of a sort of falcon is very immediate because Amelia um, got married to Alfonso Lania and Lania means falcon in French so she, here she is describing um, a little scene of her own of her own her own life which must have been very 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 difficult um, and you know she's doing it in exactly the right place and the right time reflecting you know the fact that she had moved out of court I mean, the most, the most interesting links between Salvadeus and the plays are firstly that Salvadeus contains um, a long crucifixion, crucifixion story. It's 1600 line comic, um, satiric crucifixion portrait. And this is relevant because the allegories in the plays include several um, uh, satirical crucifixion stories, including the death of, the death of Pyramus. So the existence of this um, big crucifixion story um, is, is, is important. Secondly, Salvadeus uses uh, the Gospel of Matthew, which is the same, the same gospel used, used, by, used by the writer of the plays. It uses um, many of, of the same sources, like, like Boccaccio and, and Ovid, that were also used by the, by the author of the plays. It uses um, a rare word, Dictina, which is a word for the, um, the, the, the moon goddess in a particular spelling that's only found in two places, found in, in Salvadeus and found, found in Love's Name's Lost. It also uses a number of... Um, words that were actually invented by the author of the Shakespearean plays and um, he also uses rare word clusters. For example, um, the Cookham poem, which is the end poem of the collection, um, uses references to, to birds, ditties and warbling that are used all together um, that are only, other, are only found in the Shakespearean plays and found, found, in, and found, in, found, found in this collection of poems by Amelia. Um, it also uses references to um, how frost affects plants that are only, uh, only otherwise found in the Shakespearean plays. So there are many different uh, stylistic uh, char characteristics 
um, that are found. But perhaps the most important of all of them is that um, in one of the, the prefatory letters, which is the letter to Mary Sidney, um, is written in the form uh, very similar to a mosque, and it starts with the, uh, the, the descent, descent of the chariot of Juno, and it, it is an adaptation of, of a mask by, by, by uh, Daniel, um, the mask of the goddesses, 12 goddesses, and it is this mask um, that was also used by the writer of The Tempest to create the, the, the short mask that exists in The Tempest, which also has uh, the descent of a chariot of Juno. So the coincidence that at the same time as the person was writing The Tempest, this other person was also writing um, a little mask also about the descent of the chariot of Juno, it's just too much to believe that these were not connected. Mm -hmm.